there's this one scraggly tree and on the end of each branch is a gypsy moth caterpillar and the tree is completely eaten bare but look up into the trees that's my forest and it's june this pine here we have been banding and taping and burlapping and taking the eggs off gone we banded we've been taken care of gone century-old oaks we've been taken care of gone and beautiful white pine toast our kids trampoline it's full of poop and dead caterpillars. Uh, I'm not eating my lettuce because they refuse. So they win that. <sighs> Look at our barbecue. And I had this beautiful deck built. And he <clears throat> leaf blowed it before. Oh, look at they like my beans. Before it rained. Because when the stuff gets wet, it gets really mucky. There's some wet green caterpillar poo. Look at this. Look at that slime. You can see that my tulip trees are pretty healthy. But guess what? Caterpillars are eating them. There's nothing we can do. Well, we could spray them in the spring like we wanted to. I spray them. I smush them. I hose them off of my trees to protect them. I spray trunks of trees, wash them off. I use soap. I use insecticide. And I do this, wash them off the leaves, and then kill them two to three times a day and I'm not making a dent. So again, thank you for the ideas, but they're not working. When I come out and do this, I get rashes on any exposed skin because their little hairs don't have to, you don't have to have one on you. Their little hairs float in the wind. So on windy days, I'm more likely to get rashes. I just can't <laughs> cope. <laughs> so my suggestion to everybody in Lambton Shores from, what are we? <laughs> Forest all the way up to Grand Bend. If you don't want to do this, if you don't want to spend your days dealing with blood and guts and dying for it get on it now organize your private sprays by helicopter or plane now Ooh, some helpful tips too about um getting yourselves organized uh I, I think that there are some rules about helicopters flying over residential areas so you need to call somebody that might have a dual engine plane those have, those are allowed to fly over residential areas and it is very expensive. Um, you're spraying BTK and if you're just doing it yourself, it can be in the thousands. But if you're like us, we are going to band together here in Deer Run. Um, we are paying about a hundred dollars an acre. And I've posted before the difference that the spray makes compared to no spray. So, I mean, that is a one, that's $100 well spent. One last point in my gypsy moth rant. You know, it's all good what we do on our private property, but at my house along the highway, we have trees that are part of the municipal property. If those trees aren't sprayed, the problem won't go away. We have, what is it? 24 square kilometers or something of provincial park across the road if they do not spray it will continue to be a problem so I understand 
when the municipality tells us that this is a private property issue, but it's not. I know there is some apprehension about the spray. I mean, spraying chemicals from overhead, of course, that would make people worried. But we are going to do here in Deer Run, we have an email group organized. Um, so an email will go out and I think it stay in half an hour before the spray and stay in half an hour after the spray. And it's a chemical that's approved by the CDC. Uh, it's used on all of your fruits and vegetables. There's only a small window when it affects just the gypsy moth. It's like five days in there, but I mean, you got to weigh your pros and cons and I don't really see any cons in spraying. Fill me in if I'm missing something. Also, my five-year-old son has named each gypsy moth and <laughs> complains when I kill them. He's like, mom, that was Mark. Mom. Oh, that was Nathan. Yeah, I killed Nathan.